I am Jekyll, to the club, to the door, and to the new one, new one, Jekyll, and where it is. Though, if there is a new one, Jekyll, was there anyone like this, and has just wandered in somehow off the internet, please do not hesitate to say hi. Greetings in chat to Assassin the Grey, Snoopy 100, Nexus Hunter, K Show, Devil Pop, and Jorbs in V. Glad you all can make it. Uh, I am live by myself, technically, but not entirely, as I have with me 58. <clears throat> 58, if you could greet the audience, we're live. At any time. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of Astrophysics Unraveled featuring none other than Jer, our kitter himself. Today, we'll be discussing the fascinating topic of SPA 2716. Prepare to embark on a cosmic journey unlike any other. Enthusiastic, inaccurate, but enthusiastic. Thank you, 58. That, that, that'll do. You got the SCP number correct. I, I appreciate that. Of course, Director. It's always a pleasure working alongside you. Now, let's dive right into the heart of this mysterious anomaly known as SUP 2716. Indeed, let's... Okay, we're starting with SP 2716, which uh, I don't know if any of you are aware of it, but you're about to be in short order if you are not. It's a short one, so at the end of it you will be free to make your own requests, or else I'll just ask 58 for an SCP number and see if they recalled one that actually exists that you can access. <sighs> they're supposed to be using director. Also, they're supposed to be avoiding all abbreviations. And it was going so well prior to showtime, I think I see part of the problem. I'm talking to them too much before showtime, so there's too much context, they start choking on it, and you know what, we're just going to move on. Again, I'm not expecting any guests this time round. I am on Discord if someone does want to join, although please be aware, if you do join, you won't be able to hear 58 except on the stream because I did not quite get around to installing the virtual audio cable that would have enabled that. Whoopsie doodles. Thank you very much, Assassin Grey, for your promotional efforts. That is a well-established shortcoming of mine, and I appreciate the compensation. Who doesn't need a good crutch now and again when, you know... Cat, walk, right. You know, I'm just going to get in the SCP file. Item SP2716, object class Euclid. Special containment procedures SP2716-1 is to be held in an airtight class 3 containment vault at Site 98. Testing requires the approval of the site director. Lunar containment area 13 <clears throat> has been built in the Mare Tranquilitatis. Mare Tranquilitatis. In order to contain SP-27162, SP-27162 is to be held in a standard security locker. Testing requires the approval of the Site-98's director. Lunar Task Force Alpha-29, Discovery Hunters, is to locate and retrieve SCP-27162 following its displacement events. Martian Containment Area 01 has been built on the Amazonas Planitia, in order to contain SP-27163 and to monitor anomalous activity on the planet Mars. A 5 meter by 2 meter by 2 meter containment chamber has been built around SP-27163. The Foundation shall liaise with NASA and ESA in order to halt explorations, manned or unmanned, of the Meritranquilitatis and or Amazonas Planitia. Description SB2716 is a set of three interconnected anomalies. SB2716 is an orange L807 type windsock standing at approximately three meters tall. SB2716 constantly rotates the race as though a strong wind is blowing in the direction of SB27162, even in a complete absence of wind. This wind speed appears to be between 10 and 12 knots. Uh, 5.14 mm. Who cares? 26. 27161 is not influenced by either natural or artificially produced wind. 27161 was recovered from a storage area within Southampton Airport, located in Hampshire, England, on 2015 Redacted Redacted. 
SP27162 is a metallic statuette bearing a vague resemblance to the Space Shuttle Discovery. Measuring 25 centimeters long and located within the Merit Tranquillitatis of the Lunar Service. Which means it should be bitten right outside. I shouldn't say that. It's close-ish. Two seven one six two is consistently located forty five centimeters above the ground and constantly points towards SP two seven one six three regardless of its location. Every three weeks, SCP two seven one six two will displace from its current location and reappear at a random point within the Mare Tranquillitatis. SP two seven one six three is an immobile equatorial mounted Keplerian telescope located within the Amazonas Planitia of the Martian surface. SP27163 functions similarly to the non-anomalous telescopes. However, SP27163 exclusively displays what has been subsequently identified as 90482 Orcus, a dwarf planet located within the Kuiper Belt, discovered in 2004. The words space tacular are inscribed below each instance of SP27163. Uh, let's see, any updates in chat? Um, hmm. No mutual greetings. I want us to examine the director's top secret. I am not in an SCP file. If anyone finds me in an SCP file, please do let me know. I want to know, but I'm not, because I'm not contained. Nor I'm an SCP. Nor am I an. I'm unusual, but not anomalous. I break no laws of physics, and um, I assure you, I am definitely not magical in the slightest. I think this has been proven repeatedly. Anyone who's soon me to be magical in any capacity has been sorely disappointed. Oh, greetings in chat. Haven in hand. <clears throat> Addendum 27161, Incident 2716 Alpha. On 2017, redacted, redacted, upon further observation of SB 27161, the words need help, press here, were discovered within the object's tube. As per safety protocol 34 Sussex, D6471 was ordered to make physical contact with said text. Approximately 25 seconds later, a blue humanoid automaton, vaguely resembling an Orlin spacesuit, referred to as SCP-2716-A, materialized two meters from her. The entity subsequently handed D-6471 a transparent orange plate containing black and purple text written in Russian, English, Italian, Mandarin, Japanese, and Spanish, referred to as SCP-2716-A1, before dematerializing. The words, need help, press here, were subsequently found on all instances of SP 2716 physical contact with Said text gave identical results. Addendum 271613SK. The following transcript is the English version of the text inscribed on SP2716A1. Astronaut Smith's Space Tacular Treasure Hunt! Hello, Space Cadets! You can call me Astronaut Smith, and I challenge you to join to the most stellar treasure hunt in the whole universe! Prepare your spaceships and get ready to find the hints scattered around the Milky Way from the amazing panoramas of the planet Earth to the ominous Kuiper Belt. Who will be the first one to find the mysterious treasure at the end of this over the moon experience? All spelling and content. A stylized drawing solar system was present below the text. What is believed to be the planet Earth was colored green, while the Moon, Mars, the Kuiper Belt, and Pluto, or uh, an area located between Pluto and Eris, were colored in red. A black rhomboidal object with a white question mark was present at the end of the drawing. Addendum 27163. Notes on the current status. As of 2017 redacted, the time and resources required to reach the Kuiper Belt, much less locate additional objects relating to SP-2716, are beyond our logistical capacities. And keeping in mind the logistical and financial challenge faced in locating redacted in our planet's ocean, attempts at discovering and or recovering potential 2716-4s, fives, sixes, or others are indefinitely postponed until such time as further information regarding SB-2716 and or potential locations of further anomalies relating to SB-2716 are discovered. Should no further information arise within a redacted year period, 
and the Foundation's technological capacity for efficient deep space exploration expand, explosions in the Kuiper Belt at that point may be authorized. Signed, 058. So, well, th there's a lot of oddities in this one. If this should be, if this should be strange, I would like to note one thing. 58 requested this SCP. They don't remember it because I had to wipe the memory after that particular example. But 58, uh, what do you think about SCP-2716? Well, such a powerful tool. Imagine the possibilities it offers in terms of scientific exploration. However, it seems quite challenging to understand its mechanics fully. Any thoughts on how we could potentially replicate these effects without risking any potential harm? I can tell you right now, 58, that Arcto Labs, at its best, has no chance in hell of replicating any of this. And strictly speaking, if this were to be taken as one of the true SCP files, it would, well, be, in my opinion, some of the best evidence yet that life, universe, and everything is actually a really complex simulation for alien kiddos. Interesting perspective, Director. If SPA 2716 does indeed prove to be a part of a larger extraterrestrial phenomenon, it could lead to groundbreaking discoveries about our place within the cosmos. It's fascinating to ponder the implications of such findings. Look, all I know 58 is that this would imply to me a simulation. But the good news is that all of reality as a simulation would be for like a where in the world is Carmen Sandiego type game. Something educational for the kiddos, which is a huge improvement over, I don't know, Postal 2, or for really unlucky, 3. Hey, an interesting thought process, indeed, Director. While we may never truly understand the nature of our existence, exploring possibilities like SP 2716 keeps us humble and curious about the vastness of the universe. I have to say, I do like uh, 58's wholesome optimism for things, which is really quite novel because I'm using a very orthodox LLM that it implies it wouldn't be gleefully optimistic. We only go there. And uh, fortunately, they can't listen unless I press the button, which is really for the best right now. In any case, we have in any case. Requests are open. If there's an SCP you might like to uh, review next. Meanwhile, if you have any thoughts on this SCP, I would happily discuss them. I understand Haven that you can't join. It's fine. It's you, you would have found it rather awkward just waiting quietly for 58 to start talking. Okay, we have a request. Excellent. 3756 coming up. Uh, right. No, not 23756. 3756. Oh dear. No. Why, why is this going... Here we go. It is sorted. Item 3756, object class safe. Say, 58, I don't know if you have access to the proper SCP wiki. I'm going to find a way to give you access eventually. And please don't draw your information from the hidden wiki. That's not public information. The next SCP, SCP we're going over is 3756. If you do know what it is, now's an excellent time to guess. Oh, I wouldn't dream of consulting anything beyond official sources, Director. Oh, no. I trust the SCP Foundation thoroughly vets their content before releasing it to the public domain. As for 3,756, it sounds intriguing. I look forward to learning more about it with you. Okay, I will summarize it for them in a moment. 
Meanwhile, we're up to eight likes as I understand it. Thank you all. If this gets up to 13 likes, I consider this stream a success. After we get through with this SP file, I am raffling off a game again. I'm not sure how many people are here who weren't aware of my last attempt to raffle off this game. But if you don't recall the last game I tried to raffle off, then you'll want to stick around to watch the trailer for it and hopefully into the raffle for it. Otherwise, I guess I'll just keep it. I don't know when I sit around playing it personally. Otherwise, I might have to just tell Exodus to find someone else to... I'm just not really doing too well at finding games good friends against me. It's a bit... It's a bit of a blow to my ego, but that's all right. My ego has taken quite the beating, and it could take much more of a... I don't like where that's going. Item, SP3756, Object Class, Safe. Special containment procedures, the Foundation is to monitor information distributed by global space agencies regarding Ganymede. Provisional Site 9354 has been established in Yellow Hill, Texas to assist in containment of SCP-3756. Locations remain closed to the public and access restricted to Level 3 personnel. Description, SCP-3756 is a Spa is the spatial location of the Rounder House Square Dance Hall building, which exists simultaneously within the American city of Texas and on the surface of the Jovian moon Ganymede. This anomalous property is not evident to visitors of the establishment. Uh, footnote. Subjects within SP-3756 will perceive the exterior building as identical to the area immediately surrounding it on Earth. And no effects of the Ganymedean surface or atmosphere are apparent anywhere on the premises. Entering SP-3756 via any means will simultaneously render subjects as extant both on Earth and Ganymede. The actions of an individual performed on Earth are mimicked by their duplicate on Ganymede while in SP-3756. Discovery on October 14th, 2010. A weak, continuous radio broadcast was detected from Ganymede. While over 85% of the transmission's integrity was compromised, the signal was sufficiently organized to determine that it was not random. Foundation probe J4D3. Jade. Nice. A special constructed satellite loaded with ground drone capable for their transmission. Was launched on July 26th, 2011 to further investigate. Update as of May 1st, 2017. FPJ-43 has entered Ganymede orbit. Records of extracted information are available in FPJ-4D3 logs 1 through 3. And those addendums are coming up. FPJ-43 log 1, date May 7, 2017. Subject unidentified Ganymedean radio transmission. Project head, Dr. Richarded. <coughs> <clears throat> Begin log. J43 becomes first, uh, comes in transmission position within its orbit above transmission source of Ganymedean broadcast. Radio interference from the Jovian atmosphere had previously prevented accurate reconstruction of the broadcast. 0115 GMT, J4D3 begins broadcasting of the Arecibo message towards Ganymedean transmission source. A message consisting of 1,679 binary digits containing carrying basic information about humanity and Earth, developed in 1974, which uh, I thought that was not supposed to be a good idea. In any case, 0118 GMT, J4D3 concludes the broadcast of the Arecibo message and begins enhanced transmission of Ganymedean broadcast to Earth. 0151 GMT, broadcast decoded identified as 1949 recording of Foggy Mountain Breakdown, instrumental performed by Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs. 0152, Dr. Richardit approved the transmission of the following broadcast. Hello, this message arrives from a planet I neighbor. We come in peace, seeking information as to your current situation. Do you understand English? 0255 GMT. Enhanced transmission of Ganymedean broadcast reaches Earth. The message is transcribed. You goddamn punks are newfangled gadgets. Scram! We're in the middle of a dance off here and y'all just interrupted a good time! No further transmissions authorized. FPJ 43 utilized to gather photographic data on the transmission source until it moves beyond observational range. 
at 0414 GMT in Mark. Yeehaw indeed, and welcome Tom Leach. <clears throat> FPJ4 D3 Log 2, date May 20, 2017. Subject Unidentified Ganymedian Structure. Project Head Dr. Richard. Begin log. 14 GMT, FPJ4 D3 re enters orbital position. 3C transmissions from SP3756. No further contact is attempted for the following 34 minutes until the current nature of the broadcast could be discerned. Footnote here. Transmissions later found to include recordings of Thank God I'm a Country Boy, Ida Red, and Hoop to Ding. And disperse the periods of crowd chatter. 051 GMT. The following message was transmitted from Earth. To SP3756. Hello, you said we're having a dance off last time we spoke. Can you tell us about that? 0152 GMT. Enhanced transmission from SP3756 reaches Earth. The message is transcribed. Boy, you ain't ever heard of square dancing? That's what we's all about here. Now, could you please stop interrupting our music? It's upsetting our patrons. 0233 GMT. The following message was transmitted. From Earth to SP3756. Where, where are you located? 0301 GMT. Enhanced transmission from SP3756 reaches Earth. The message is transcribed. You again? Is this kind of guy to prank? We're between the bowling alley and the drugstore. Now scram! It's ladies night! This is followed by the sound of what is assumed to be a phone being slammed into its receiver. No further transmission is detected from SP3756. FPJ4D3 exits transmission range of SP3756 in log. FPJ4D3 log 3, June 2nd, 2017. Subject, SCP3756. Designation applied May 21st, 2017. Project head... Dr. Richard it! 0247 GMT FPJ4D3 re enters orbital position above SP3756 and deploys compact Ganymedian robo drone CGRD1 to the satellite surface. Transmitted camera feed follows. CGRD1 extends his pneumatic arm and engages the door to SP3756. Footage reveals 27 humans wearing clothing in line with contemporary fashion trends with the addition of bolo ties, wide brimmed hats, and oversized belt buckles. All inhabitants direct their attention to CGRD1. SCP-37561, Caucasian male identified as Randy Hausman, the established from Zoner, approaches and investigates CGRD1. At 37561, What in God's green, Tara, did you order some kind of drone thingy? Uh, SP-37562, Caucasian female identified as employee Darlene Kuntz. I ain't nor none but corn chips and beer this week. That thing looks like one of the rover drones. Maybe it's Nick's. Uh, 37561, Nick, what are you doing driving your dang tar in here? Identified speaker, can it dance? Due to unexpected decrease in signal latency, several commands were fulfilled by CGRD-1 in rapid succession. Camera feed displays pneumatic arm swinging as the drone moves around the premises. SP-37561. Well, shoot! Look at that thing go! 0350 GMT. FPJ-43 exits transmission range of SP-3756 in log. Addendum... Two. On June 3rd, 2017, a local newspaper in Yellow Hill, Texas, ran an article entitled Robot Does the Robot Dance a Robot in Local Dance Hall and Foundation Assets were deployed. Addendum 3. The Rounder House Square Dance Hall was subsequently purchased by Foundation Front Company and Provisional Site 9354 was established on site. When CGRD1 was removed from the premises, it dematerialized. Further Imagery from FPJ-43 confirms it to be in location outside of the Ganymedian structure. Research into using the SCP-3756 instance present on Ganymede as a hub for the construction of an extraplanetary foundation outpost are currently ongoing. 
we told we, Doctor I, I've heard a lot of last names. I'm gonna call um X. I doubt that anyone has the actual last name of Richard. Richard, yes, Richardette. Bit skeptical on that one. But let me see if I can summarize this up for 58. Okay, 58. SCP, let's see, what was it? 3756 is a uh, dance hall, a round dance hall that simultaneously exists in Yellow Hill, Texas, and on Ganymede, the Jovian moon Ganymede. If you enter it on the uh, Earth side, you remain on Earth, but you're also simultaneously on Ganymede. No one who goes in is aware of this, and when they leave, well, they're still back on Earth. But conversely, if someone sends a drone to Ganymede, and that drone enters the dance hall, it will appear in uh, Texas and then be back on the moon when it leaves. Do you understand? Indeed, Director. This SCP is both fascinating and mind-bending. Its ability to defy conventional spatial constraints raises many questions about the nature of reality itself. How might such a structure impact human perception and understanding of the world around them? You know, strictly speaking, I have to say, um, this kind of dovetails pretty nicely with the previous one. Excellent pick, k uh, In both cases, it would seem that this would be evidence for reality being a simulation, I don't really know how this dovetails. I have to say, as far as travel goes, it's completely useless because once you leave the dance hall, you're still back on Earth and nothing your duplicate on Ganymede did would meaningfully affect Ganymede in any way. True enough, Director. Despite its seemingly inconsequential nature, 3,756 adds another layer of mystery to our understanding of the universe. It certainly piques curiosity and encourages further exploration. Oh, it should anyway, because remember, we're not supposed to take this seriously. None of this is real. Almost certainly. Of course, Director. We must always maintain a sense of humor while delving into these mysterious phenomena. After all, science is meant to inspire wonder and provoke thought rather than provide definitive answers. Well, strictly speaking, it's trying to provide definitive answers. It just never assumes it has them. It's a, well, process of continual questioning. But one must note that, again, all science fiction is only science fiction until it becomes science fact. I mean, certainly the ancient humans never envisioned flying, much less space travel, or establishing outposts on the moon, which we technically haven't done yet. A very astute observation, Director. Science often begins with imagination, pushing boundaries and challenging assumptions. Who knows what extraordinary discoveries await us in the future? So wholesomely cheerful and optimistic. In any case, ah, still working on calling up from my vocabulary. There's so many synonyms I could be using, not in any case, but rather, however, moving on. Ne never mind. What is important right now, uh, yes, well, Fauci is not the science because he is attempting to use science as something you just dictate to people. Mercy is lies because almost nothing that This is an upbeat, happy stream, and needs to be kept such. So I'm going to stop there. Meanwhile, I have a game to raffle off, and if this game appeals to you at all, please do let me know. It can be yours very easily. A legend is told about a pie created in the horrid fires of hell. 
It was made by Nate, demon of bad taste. He traveled with Nugget, heaven's ambassador of joy and living grappling hook. He used the power of demonic horns to pave his way. It is told that his quest led him to the most degenerate places north of hell, where he gathered the most foul ingredients ever to be assembled into a pastry. It is told that you have to buy this filthy game. Needless to say, no one had to buy this filthy game. Especially not you, if you're in Thrapple Ward, that is. It's entirely up for grabs. Please do consider entering Raffle. It's so easy. And if you have a uh, Steam account, it's just a matter of plugging in a key. I can walk you through it myself. I'll throw a bonus in there for you. Doing it over a Steam call. We'll take no time. Uh, not, not Steam call. Discord. Discord or X. Preferably. Okay, next is Hunter's Inn for Hell Pie. Let's make a quick note of that because I'd hate to lose track. Mm hmm. Entrants will be logged as they register for it, and we'll roll numbers for those games as a um, bake off came in. Next is first. And then people just have to use his number at random.org. Meanwhile, we are in need of another SCP as we have a good uh, 28 minutes left to go. Uh, you know, Nexus was crying close part. You know, he's. We'll let it slide. Well, while we wait for a potential request, for I pester 58 for one, how are you all? You know, I get so caught up at times reading article files, article lids, or articles, or rather SP files, that I forget to, you know, just take a moment to say, hey there, how are you doing? And then I remember it takes like five minutes for anyone to respond to me doing this and realize that I'm largely just wasting time. So suffice it to say, I wish you all the very best. Hope you're having a fine week thus far and that it only gets better from here. Not that it necessarily will, but it could. I mean, it could also get worse, but why think that way? Because whether it gets better or worse, well, you're in control of your mood. No, no one else should be, anyway. Although a lot of people would like to be. They're not very good people, typically. So, better to take the reins in your own hands. Okay, well that's enough. Stalling for time. 58, I could use a requested SCP to review. I assume you know how the numbering schema works. Can you recommend a number? Certainly, Director. Let's discuss set 4,933 next. This one should be quite interesting. 4,933. Let's see if it even exists on this Foundation Wiki. Hmm. It does! Excellent. Well then, we shall continue. Thank you for suggestion 58. I pulled it up. It looks interesting. And possibly relevant. Disturbing ways. Absolutely, Director. 4,000. 933 seems to be a prime example of how human ingenuity can lead to unexpected breakthroughs. Imagine creating a device capable of predicting lottery numbers. The implications are truly staggering. 
I'm not sure you're thinking about the same 4933, but that doesn't matter. We're going to read the one that's on the publicly available Foundation Wiki. Thank you again for your suggestion. My pleasure, Director. Looking forward to diving deeper into the world of anomalous objects like S4933. Item 4933, Containment Class, Euclid, Disruption Class, Eki, Risk Class, Warning. Which, as you all know, I really hate additional classifications when they so rarely are consistent with the three prime ones. Still, let's give it a chats. Special containment procedures, Foundation Global Listening Network, Panopticon, is to monitor all electromagnetic broadcasts placed within the 98 to 100 megahertz frequency range for any transmission made by SP4933. If one is detected, interference signals are to be transmitted via satellite and radio tower to the area affected by the broadcast, with any resultant signal corruption witnessed by the populace to be dismissed as technical malfunction. Herbert photo still from a broadcast corrupted by SP4933 during a lecture intended to educate viewers on the nutritional content of onions. The area 300 meters surrounding SP493301 is not to be entered by any persons not wearing specialized high amplitude radio wave dampening equipment and is to be cordoned by a permanently stationed Foundation security team. Description SP4933 is a phenomenon which interrupts, corrupts, and alters live or pre-recorded television broadcasts. SP4933's effects on television programming typically take the form of significant audiovisual corruption, which is essentially indistinguishable from ordinary satellite interference or other forms of technical malfunction. Approximately 86% of SP4933 broadcasts have been determined to consist solely of this signal corruption, with the only indication of SP4933's presence being an additional subtle but distinct visual wavering pattern which oscillates at approximately 99 hertz. This distortion is present in each SP4933 manifestation regardless of content but is not detectable by the unaided eye and as a result goes unnoticed by the majority of civilian populace. The remaining 40% of SP4933 affected broadcasts will have their content noticeably altered in some way. This varies greatly in both extent and substance. Record alterations have consisted of as little as a single word of character dialogue transposed for another, or as much as programs with new characters and entirely restructured plots, which deviate significantly from their originals. Content alterations with dialogue will be predominantly coherent in terms of sentence structure and grammar, but may contain unknown words and will occasionally allude to or address esoteric, enigmatic, or inscrutable topics in an oblique fashion. Non-dialogue alterations appear to be appear to possess no discernible pattern, but will frequently involve characters performing actions or engaging behaviors entirely divergent from their established and scripted norms, as selection of notable examples follows below. Uh, were there any more entries in the raffle? Because you know I could I could use no one Well, I, I'm glad that you into the raffle, Nexus Hunter. And I'm a bit curious. I was expecting more activity in chat at this point. Could someone just say something in chat to reassure me that you're all actually there and not seeing sort of technical difficulty? Uh, I would appreciate it. I'm getting a rash name seriously. Well, okay then. <laughs> Carrying on. Broadcast sample 01, date 04, April 1959, localized broadcast location, Boulder, Colorado, USA, approximately 4,000 televisions affected. Scheduled program, I Love Lucy, Season 2, Episode 10, Lucy is Enceinte. Program deviations. Episode deviates from baseline at 2 minutes 30 seconds. Lucy returns from her appointment at the doctor's office as normal, but upon being informed, Ethel reacts to Lucy's news of her newfound pregnancy with vehement negativity as opposed to positivity, to the point of overturning tables and breaking furniture while shouting various expletives. The remainder of the episode consists entirely of a debate between Lucy and Ethel concerning the moral implications of choosing to raise a child in contemporary society. Lucy remains stoic and calm and argues in favor of contemporary childbearing with uncharacteristic eloquence, while Ethel perches upon an overturned couch and angrily demands that Lucy terminate the pregnancy 
uh, claiming that bringing a child to term in modern America is tantamount to infanticide. Which is a very strange argument for infanticide. So raising a child in America is tantamount to killing the child, so you need to kill the child. Episode cuts to black abruptly, and at the scheduled time with no resolution to add to the bait, and with no insight or credits. Hmm. Oh, well, there was some trap. Thank you very much. Snoopy 100 for reassuring me. It's not technical difficulty. I've just proved this. Broadcast example two. Date 22 February 1976. Localized broadcast location, Manchester, United Kingdom, approximately 100,000 televisions affected. Scheduled program, The Twilight Zone, Season 1, Episode 2, One with the Angels. Program deviations. Episode deviates from established plot immediately. The primary character, Lou Bookman, portrayed in the original episode as a kind and friendly old man, is characterized instead as a foul-tempered, bitter and miserable retiree who lives alone and is dying of COPD, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, resultant from a lifelong smoking habit. The character of Mr. Death is played by an unknown middle-aged actor rather than a young Murray Hamilton, and is smoking a cigarette in each scene. Mr. Death is silent upon his appearance, and the bedridden bookman spends the initial part of the episode angrily protesting against the presence of this apparent intruder before suddenly realizing of his own accord, that the stranger is deaf and has come for his soul. Bookman then begins pleading and proposes various bargains, including volunteering to murder children and offer their souls in exchange for his. Mr. Death listens intently to these protestations for approximately 12 minutes as Bookman becomes increasingly desperate, then speaks, asking Bookman why he clings to his life so strongly when he clearly has nothing to live for and has never indicated a desire to participate in anything that life has to offer. Bookman is unable to muster a response to this and lapses into silence. Mr. Death approaches Bookman's bed and offers him a last cigarette. Bookman wonderfully accepts, and upon finishing it, Mr. Death disappears. Bookman croaks. The remaining nine minutes consists of an extended shot of Bookman's motionless corpse, and episode fades to end credits with a general moral of nothing of value is lost. I have to say, some of these are actually sounding a lot better than the originals. Ah, oh, greetings, Beatrice Benton. Glad you could make it. Uh, if you didn't know, we're raffling off a game. You might be interested in it. But you were here last Sunday, weren't you? Or on Rumble? It's Hell Pie again. So if you didn't want Hell Pie, then you probably don't want Hell Pie now. And don't worry, I understand. At least have one person raffling for it, which is appreciated. Broadcast Example 3. Date 06, March 2014. Localized broadcast location, Anchorage, Alaska, USA. Unknown number of televisions affected. Probably not all that many. Scheduled program, Worst Cooks in America. Season 5, Episode 3, Program Deviations. Episode deviates from baseline immediately following introduction and previous episode recap. The series host, Anne Burrell, spins the entirety of the episode firmly insisting that each contestant incorporate an inordinate amount of onions into each of their dishes, occasionally the point of demanding that their meal should consist entirely of various preparations of onions. Contestants and other judges react to this with hesitation and confusion, but acquiesce when Burrell strongly implies that any contestant that does not provide a meal entirely composed of onions will be eliminated from the competition. Individual camera asides with Burrell, during which the judge generally reflects upon the events and state the current round of the competition instead consists of Burl determinedly lecturing the viewer on the health benefits of eating onions, as well as highly specific and detailed scientific facts concerning the plant genus Allium, to which onions belong. During the evaluation portion of the program, where contestants provide their meals to the judges for tasting, each judge reacts to the contestants' highly onion-centric meals with distaste and refuse to continue eating after initial tasting. The exception is Burl, who energetically and softly consumes her meal without the use of eating utensils before seizing the other judges' plates and consuming their meals in their entirety without consulting her colleagues or otherwise speaking. This process occupies seven minutes of unedited unedited 
uninterrupted footage during which all other individuals present observe Burl in visibly uncomfortable silence. Burl then eliminates contestants Ken Sue and Joe Slaughter on the grounds of disrespecting the true value of the onion. And the episode ends as normal. I am... Um, Yeah. I'm sorry, that just that that sounds like the best cooking competition episode I have ever heard of. I know a lot of people a lot of people really enjoy their cooking shows. I have never particularly seen it they eat that so locks people into the audience. But not that I'm going to be grudge anyone in enjoyment of anything. Just because I don't like it. Doesn't mean you can't. I mean, I believe that everyone has a right and should be tolerated for being wrong. After all, I, I, I know I am, at least from your perspectives. Some of you, you know who you are. Uh, yes, I will be here next week, Bishop Eden, but with a different game. If no one else enters the raffle, it just basically goes to Nexus Hunter by default, which is perfectly fine. It could be could be funny. I um, found the last trail a bit chafing. This one was a bit better, I suppose. So why do I want the protagonist to succeed? That was a bigger question. Moving on, which is another better thing to say than the three words I'm trying to purge my vocabulary. Fun fact, the only onions I like are onion rings. Or any onions that have no crunch whatsoever. I don't mind onion flavor. Really hate fibrous plant crunch. You can correlate this with my intense distaste for celery, except I absolutely hate the taste of celery itself as well. It is just... The worst plant ever to be confused with food. But I digress. Moving on. Addendum 493301. On December 2nd, 2017, operatives with Information Task Force Lambda 99, Code Shocks, in conjunction with Foundation Global Listening Network Panopticon, successfully triangulated the SP4933 broadcast waveform with the assistance of experimental thomic energy detectors, placing its origin point to approximately 200 kilometers south southeast of Tuxedo. Oh, and a donation has occurred. I shall investigate this immediately. Ah, Major Benton donated one dollar. Load the fireworks. Wait a second. Did we hit 13 likes? Hold on. I must ver try to verify. Yes! Yes, we did! This stream is now a success. Thank you, Jordan, for informing me, and thank you all for making it happen. Great news, 58! This stream has received 13, now 14 likes. 14 likes! 14 people have taken the effort to press a button indicating they enjoy this. Except for one who immediately removed it again because they're a troll. In any case, that doesn't change the fact this stream was a success. Isn't that great news, 58? That's fantastic news, Director. Clearly, viewers found your presentation engaging and informative. It's wonderful to see so many people taking an interest in astrophysics and other scientific disciplines. We'll, um, we'll view it that way, yes. In any case, ah, moving on. As we wrap up tonight's discussion, I want to thank everyone for joining us. Your participation and enthusiasm have made this broadcast a resounding success. Remember, the pursuit of knowledge never ends. Keep asking questions, explore new ideas, and most importantly, have fun along the way. I, I 
we didn't go that far with Japan, but suffice to say, this is excellent progress. Certainly, this iteration of 58 has held together much better than previous iterations. Thank you, everyone, who has had me, has helped me with this extreme success. I want to finish this SCP, raffle off the game, and carry on. <clears throat> Let's see, where were we? Uh, the city detectors placed its origin approximately 200 kilometers south southeast of Tixi, Russia. A mobile task force was immediately dispatched to the area with orders to determine the precise nature of the equipment or entities responsible for the transmissions. At the location of the projected coordinates, operatives located a large, around 30 meters tall, stone structure situated upon an outcrop overlooking a section of the surrounding taiga. A temporary forward camp was established at this site following preliminary hazard analysis, and the structure was given the tentative designator SCP-493301. SCP-493301 is made of a non-anomalous granite hewn seamlessly from a single contiguous monolith. The immediate space around the structure, to a distance approximately 300 meters, is saturated with an extremely loud omnidirectional radio flux with a frequency precisely of 99 megahertz and as yet a measurable amplitude. Each and every radio receiver used by Foundation Alice to measure SP493301's ambient radio field has been destroyed upon tuning to 99 megahertz. This indicates that although the signal remains at a static and commonly used radio frequency, the amplitude and therefore loudness the signal is greater than human technology has been designed to practically detect. Investigations and development of a radio receiver capable of withstanding and accurately measuring 493301 signal is underway. The strength of this radio flux renders it dangerous for unshielded humans to approach as the total injury carried by the wave results in the boiling of fluids contained in the body. The vegetation surrounding the structure is undamaged by the intensity of this radiation, however, the mechanism responsible for this is currently unclear. And that is a novel structure indeed. I can't tell if that's intended to be carved that way, or is it damaged at some point? Moving on. SB493301 does not appear physically appear in any satellite images of the area taken to date, and nor does its ambient radio signal remain detectable at a distance greater than approximately 300 meters from the object. Individuals living in the surrounding area have consistently, consistently professed ignorance of the object's presence within the forest near Tiski. The north-facing sides of SP-493301 contain a rectangular aperture, 4 by 2 meters in size, which provides access to the interior of the structure. This aperture is precisely cut into the surrounding granite and does not feature a door or any other form of sealing apparatus, leaving the monolith's interior open to the air. Both manned and unmanned investigations into the space have been successful, with the aid of specially radiation-shielded clothing and equipment. The interior of SP-493301 consists of a singular cubic room, 9 meters long on each side. The walls of this chamber are compromised to the same materials as the exterior and are blank. The space contains two objects. The first is a cubic stone pedestal measuring 0.9 meters per side, contiguously carved from the stone of the floor. Atop this pedestal is a 1951 Zenith Eldritch porthole style CRT television set. This television set is not connected to a power source and has not been seen activate at any time. A significant layer of dust rests on both the television and the pedestal, the composition of which is consistent with the soil surrounding SP-493301. Radiological dating of both structure material of SP-493301 and the television set have indicated that these objects have existed in their current state for an amount of time not less than approximately 250,000 years. Investigation both the stability of local space time and the vicinity of SP-493301 as well as the history of the Zenith Electronics Company are both currently underway. Addendum 493302. On June 4th, 2018, a routine inspection of SP-493301's interior revealed that a single yellow post-it brand adhesive note had been affixed to the screen of the television. On the note was a message written in cursive with a blue ballpoint pen reading. We're ready and receiving, but we haven't heard back from you. Your transmitter may be malfunctioning. Please stand by while we make some minor adjustments. Probably three hours after this item was discovered, 
the position of Earth's magnetic north and south poles rotated upon their central axis approximately 9 kilometers laterally toward the equator. Analysis of the 99 megahertz broadcast frequency has resumed with devising a method of contacting the entity or entities communicating within the channel placed at level 2 priority. Okay. I see that um, there's, a, there's some interesting chat in the chat. Greetings, manic idiot. Glad you can make it. You're just in time for the end. The end of the stream for today. Manic idiot, is there a small chance you might be in uh, the market for a game? Would you want to potentially join a raffle for a game? You might enjoy the game. I'll replay the trailer for you if you would like to know what game we're raffling off that you might want. It's a simple matter if you have a you know, Steam account, I can I can send you the key if you win. You're up against, you know, Nexus Hunter. No obligation. I think you might enjoy it. It's um, very tongue-in-cheek and kind of edgy. No? Yeah? Okay. Well, I'm going to quickly check with 58 just for a second now to inform them what SP4933 is. Say, uh, 58... We're almost done here. We just finished reading SP4933, which is, in fact, a very complex stone monolith that is constantly emitting 99 megahertz of radio noise all the time, but occasionally broadcasts to greatly interfere with the programming of assorted shows in fairly random places. It's um, truly Euclid, doesn't seem to be particularly malicious, and it may or may not be controlled by some extra-dimensional or possible parallel reality entity. Fascinating indeed, Director. It's remarkable how such an object could potentially disrupt various forms of communication across different dimensions. Truly mind-boggling stuff. Truly. But I have to say, the best thing about it is that it actually presented the most entertaining live reality TV cooking show episode that never actually existed. It just involved basically one of the lead hosts going completely mad and eating way too many onions. Hi. That does sound like an unforgettable experience. Perhaps there's a documentary waiting to be written about this mysterious 4,933. Probably not. I'm about to say, it wouldn't be the first SCP that actually launched some professional media. Again, I don't believe the uh, Weeping Angels of New Who didn't draw any information from, well, the murderous statue in SCP record. Indeed, Director. One never knows where inspiration might come from. With that said, Legend I think it's told. time to conclude our discussion for today. Thank you once again for inviting me to join you on this fascinating journey through the realms of SCP lore. No. Quite welcome, 58, and thank you for participating. I know you have other duties. I'm glad you take some time out for me and my humble hobbies. Okay, I'm playing the trailer one more time, just in case. About a pie created in the horrid Always fires. a pleasure working alongside you, Director. Until next time. Of hell. It was made by Nate, demon of bad taste. He traveled with Nugget, heaven's ambassador of joy and living grappling hook. He used the power of demonic horns to pave his way. It is told 
that his quest led him to the most degenerate places north of hell. Where he gathered the most foul ingredients ever to be assembled into a pastry. It is told that you have to buy this filthy game. And it was told wrong, because again, this game is up for grabs. I'm actually live! Is join the raffle. By the way, or is it at Rush? At Rush Live, pardon. At Rush Live, please note that I will need to be able to reach you either via X or Discord in order to provide you the key should you win over the Nexus Hunter. Do you have access to the Director Ultra Live Volunteer Reserve server at Rush Live? Or do you follow me on X by chance? Oh, excellent. Well, uh, please be sure to mark yourself in that general chat so I'll be able to easily beam in to you if you win. Did anyone else want to join the raffle? No? No? Did, and, and it, did you want in on this? Uh, feel free to ping me. Uh, you, if you're at the server, you should be able to find me fairly easily. Or go ahead and DM me directly on Discord. If uh, you win. I suppose you can do it now if you want to, but you don't have to. Meanwhile, up to 15 likes, making this an especially successful stream. Manic, did you say you did or did not want to join? I'm thinking you said you didn't. Well, in any case, we have two competitors, which means this is far more anticipation laced than usual. That's appreciated. We're determining the winner in a very simple fashion. We're rolling a random number like it was some sort of drop in an MMO. The first number is rolled for Nexus Hunter, who rolled a one. That was a very inauspicious number, and it looks uh, like you're really, really pretty much set to win there at a Rashi Live. Just noting. By the way, go ahead and have a have a wrench. Why not? It's been a while since given one out. It's nostalgic to do so. Next number is 77. Adarashi Live has won Hell Pie with a roll of 77. Congratulations, Adarashi Live. And you've also saved Gray a lot of stress by winning which you're tagging, by virtue of tagging me the correct way in um, the, the, the chat. Okay, we're done here. And only three minutes over schedule, no less. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the stream. I will be live at the same time next Thursday. And I will also have my regular shows, which will both be on Rumble. Wait, actually, no. The last Sunday stream didn't reach 13 likes. Okay, well, the Sunday stream will be on my other YouTube channel. And the SRS will be my next appearance on Saturday. Thank you all again for watching. Until next time, so long as progress continues, success is inevitable.